been a rough year. I almost quit this shit. I, I, look, I almost quit this shit on the tour. The, we got robbed in Oakland, nigga. <laughs> we got robbed. And this is how I know I ain't shit. They took everything but the merch, nigga. <laughs> Some bullshit. <laughs> I almost quit this shit, man. I almost quit this shit during the quarantine. I don't know about y'all. Didn't have a good time. It was rough. I, it got so bad for me, I almost went to law school online. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad this shit got. Law school online. I was like, Johnny Cocker make this shit look easy. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck it. Nah, man. Like, I don't know. I think subconsciously I wanted to be a lawyer because I think every rapper needs a legal nigga on the team <laughs> to stop them from snitching on themselves and their lyrics. Y'all know about this shit? Like, courts is using lyrics as evidence to convict niggas of crimes. Y'all know about this shit? It's wild. Like, I'm a big Bobby Shmurda fan. I don't know about y'all. But when I was younger, Bobby Shmurda had this song called Hot Nigga. Hot boy to many of you. <laughs> and in that song, if you just look at the lyrics, like, you know Bobby's friends that give a fuck about him, man. Like, first line, this nigga says, I've been selling crack since the fifth grade. <laughs> That's illegal. <laughs> like, if I would have been one of Bobby's friends and I had heard Hot Nigga, like, I'd been like, all right, Bobby, this sound cool, but like, you admitted to 12 felonies in verse two, my nigga. Let's keep this shit on the hard drive, you know what I'm saying? Because he had another crazy line. He straight up says, Monte was with me. <laughs> That's when we shot niggas. I don't think Monte liked that shit. I don't think Monte heard that song until it went number one on Billboard. And he was at his mom's house eating cereal, right? Hot boy is on the speaker. He eating the cereal. Song comes on, he's like, oh shit, Bobby got him one. Okay. Monte was with me, bro. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> They're not gonna let me work at the post office no more. <laughs> so then he texts Bobby, he's like, Bobby. Why would you name drop me in a song? My mom's gonna know I'm a criminal. And then Bobby texts him back, nigga, you are 27 eating cereal at your mom's house. She knows you're a criminal. <laughs> I don't know, man, I can't judge. I can't judge, man. Like, if I had been a part of Bobby's crew, I would've told him to say some stupid shit too, you know? But what they could've did to say today, they could've hired me to do the ad libs. My hot boy listeners, y'all know what the ad libs are? Y'all know what ad libs are? All right, so Bobby goes in the booth, records his verse, says some wild shit, right? And then I go in the booth and save the day and do my ad lib, allegedly, because... <laughs> How we doing, Chicago? Y'all cool? I'll be real, man. I, I just, I decided to shoot my special here. I just needed a break from LA. I just needed a break. They, LA does some weird shit, man. They, they be doing this weird shit to me where they just assume I'm bisexual because I'm a good person. <laughs> I don't know, is anybody, any other nice ass niggas here? Does that happen to you? It's, it's wild. It's wild. I don't know if y'all know this shit, but apparently straight men are so bad Good manners just make you gay now. That's just how it works. That ain't fair. I was just raised right, nigga. That ain't fair. It's wild. 
And, and if there's any bisexual people here, I just want to apologize. I don't think that's fair. I get lumped in your struggle because I'm a nice ass nigga. That's not right. That, that's not fair to you, right? Like if y'all talk to a bisexual woman lately, ask her a dating story. This bitch gonna sound like she just got back from war, nigga. It's crazy out here. It's too many options. It's not fun. It's nah, bro. Every Pride Month, it's just hard for a nice nigga like me, man. Like people just assume. Like I, I was at his Pride party, man. And uh, this girl got drunk, super drunk. Lost her phone, keys, dignity, all that shit. And, uh, <laughs> so me and my homies, we got her home safe, got her back to her roommate. Next morning, she finds her phone, Venmo's me $20, right? Venmo's me $20. And she wrote me a letter in the Venmo charge. I didn't know there was this many characters in that shit. <laughs> but she wrote me a letter, she said, Dear Niles, I know this last presidency has been hard for you and your people. <laughs> so take this $20 and enjoy the rest of your, she put it in caps, month. <laughs> I was like, what? I commented on that Venmo charge so fast. I said, bitch, it ain't February. Don't ever say that shit again. <laughs> I love I love Pride Month though, bro. I love love my gay and trans gay trans homies, man. I love them because I'm from the South, bro. And every time I go home, somebody say something ignorant, man. Every time I was at a wedding, right? Options at the wedding were fish or steak. I picked fish. I didn't want to be heavy on the dance floor. Niggas be wobbling and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and why did a dude at my table lean over and go, "Nigga, you gay"? That's not fair, like, I don't think you should have to say no homo before you eat sea bass. That's not, it's not right. It's not right. Every time, every time I go home, they just ask, ask something ignorant because I got, I got gay friends, man. They be like, do they come on to you? No, that's not, that's not what happens when you have gay friends. Like, if anybody in here, if you the straight homie in the gay friend group, you know what it is. You just a fucking chauffeur, you know. <laughs> The niggas laughing hard, no. Gay niggas do not like to drive, bro. I don't know what it is. They just don't do that shit. It's just, it ain't they shit, man. And it's, it's trash, cause it's like, I be driving, gas expensive, bro. And I be driving the gay homies around. I can't ask for gas money, cause then I'm the homophobe. You know what I'm saying? It's bullshit, they found a loophole, nigga. It's, it's not fair, man. I, that's why I, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of this homophobia and transphobia, man. Like, cause I'm from the South and families in the South do this bullshit where they'll accept a pedophile uncle over like a gay or trans family member. Come on. Yeah, you know about this? Your family did it, I know. <laughs> and it's fucked up. And you, bl and you black, and you know what black families do. Black families can't even say the word pedophile out loud. Well, black families say is, well, you know, Uncle Allen just a little off. <laughs> That's what they say, a little off. And I don't like that shit. Cause it's just like, a little off, like, I don't think that's the adjective. <laughs> I don't know if that's the adjective we should be using for this nigga that can't come to dinner cause of middle school down the street. Like, <laughs> that's fucked up. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right, man. Like. A little off, like, a little off is what I would use to describe LeBron's acting in Space Jam, too. Like, that's, <laughs> that shit was trash. <laughs> and I'm a big LeBron fan, bro. And, like, my whole life, I thought the worst thing I'd ever see LeBron James do is tear an ACL. And no, it was rapping with Porky Pig, nigga. That. <laughs> Man, whole time I was watching like, it's for kids, it's for kids, it's for kids. <laughs> so bad, ugh. Anybody, uh, anybody find out like something new about themselves during the pandemic? Like you find out you was like a feet nigga or some shit like that? <laughs> no, look, I'm not making fun of feet niggas. Like, one of the best directors of all time, Quentin Tarantino is a feet nigga. Like, y'all weird, but like, just know like, there's hope for you. Like that's, it's okay. I didn't find no weird shit like that out, but 
I found something new about myself during the pandemic, and it was so different that like my family had to tell me. My family sat me down Thanksgiving Day. We were at my aunt's house, and they told me some weird, some weird shit. They told me that I'm Irish. <laughs> I'm Irish. And it's like, first of all, why are you giving niggas bad news on a holiday? What <laughs> the fuck, man? It's not white. It's not right, man. <laughs> I said white. That's crazy. <laughs> nah. And then, like, they don't give you, they didn't give me no information. They just, they just like, your great great grandmother was this very mean Irish woman, and that's it. That's all they told me. That's all they told me. And I got mad because shit started making sense. <laughs> Like, I was like, oh shit, that's, that's why you cried during Goodwill Hunting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Matt Damon, not even that good of an actor, nigga. Like, I was just an angry Irishman this whole entire time. <laughs> Bullshit, man. So, yeah, I, look, and I'm a curious dude, man. I, so, I, I wanted to go meet my people, my new brethren. So, <laughs> so I, I went to a pub and. <laughs> That's not racist, that's where they be. <laughs> that's where they be, that's where they congregate. <laughs> and so, I was hanging out with them, and shit got weird, man. Cause, I don't know if y'all know this about Irish people, it might be some of y'all in here, but like. <laughs> Irish people are a very oppressed white. Y'all know that? <laughs> Irish, the Irish people, had a very hard time at the beginning of their story in this country. And when they drunk, they gonna tell you about them motherfucking potatoes, nigga. <laughs> they gonna tell you about them fucking potatoes. They gonna let you know. And so I'm just sitting there, it's getting weird, cause like, nah, I get it. Cause they had it so bad, they don't let black people have a struggle shine. Y'all know about this shit? Every time black people go through something, an Irish person, their instinct, the first thing to say is, well, we were slaves too, boy, oh, no. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Seamus. No, you weren't. Stop. We're not doing it. Look, if you Irish in the room, we doing a history lesson tonight. Y'all was not slaves. Y'all niggas was unpaid interns at best, all right? Stop. You embarrassing yourself. Stop that shit, man. Tired of it, man. Cause, cause look, there, there's Holocaust deniers out there and I think we can all agree that's insane. That's crazy. Uh, but if you bought a ticket, you can stay. Um, <laughs> But I will say I'm somewhat of an Irish slavery denier. I don't think that should happen. I don't. Okay, and I look, I'm not just up here saying stupid shit. Like I can back it up. Like either Irish slavery didn't happen or it wasn't that bad. <laughs> because y'all ain't got no good music, bro. Let's be real, like, come on. Have y'all heard traditional Irish, like, bagpipe music? Ain't no bad bitch talking to bagpipes, come on. That's not a thing. Have y'all heard bagpipe music? It sounds like it's like fighting against itself. Like, have y'all ever watched a high school basketball game and two niggas grab the rebound at the same time? That's Irish music, bro. Shit is bad. Somebody said no. No, nah, that, that shit is terrible. Cause look at look at black people, man. We we had a bad time in this country, still are, and but we got some dope musical icons out the deal. Yeah, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. I ain't got to tell y'all what they got in common. You know what I'm saying? Look, I don't think it's a coincidence the two dopest blind people to ever live are both niggas that play the piano, okay? <laughs> that shit is not a coincidence. Stevie Wonder got five baby mamas, nigga. That shit is crazy. He wrote a song called A Ribbon in the Sky. So smooth, and he can't even see that shit. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild, bro. And then like, I'm sure we've all seen the Oscar award winning movie Ray with Jamie Foxx. We've seen that, right? So that means you know Ray Charles was a blind heroin addict. I don't think y'all heard what the fuck I just said. <laughs> Ray Charles was a blind heroin addict. You gotta want that shit, bro. <laughs> Come on.
come on now. We all know people with all their senses that can't hit a bong right. So look. <laughs> Ray Charles is black excellence in my book. I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't give a fuck. Y'all still not hearing what I'm saying. Y'all still not hearing what I'm saying. Blind heroin addict, I'ma demonstrate. So, with Ray Charles' eyes permanently blinded by God, this nigga will wrap a cord around his arm like so, and then stick a needle in that arm, eyes closed, and find a vein. Was he hearing the shit? I don't know. It's crazy, right? I'll let y'all in on some more blind facts. Uh, white people got so jealous of Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder at their peak that they demanded that Marvel Comics create Daredevil. Think about that shit. For the people in this room to have sex, Daredevil is a blind superhero. <laughs> slash lawyer, slash Irishman, one of me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are three very hard things to do you can't fucking see, man. And Daredevil's one of my favorite superheroes. Nigga, blind and just be saving people and shit. It's crazy. That's what white people did. They got so jealous of Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles, they created this whole mythical white man that was blind. <laughs> Because they couldn't stand the fact that these niggas were so amazing. That's what white people do. When they lose, they just create new rules and shit. <laughs> so they created Daredevil because they was jealous of Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. Because there was no, and I get it though, there was no white blind representation in the media <laughs> at that time. At that time, there was no white blind representation in the media. Ask me why. Because <laughs> Helen Keller has no swag. That's crazy. <laughs> My mom told me to stop telling that joke. <laughs> She's like, you've been telling Helen Keller jokes for 20 years. I'm like, yeah, nigga, that's why it's good. What's up? <laughs> I'm a veteran at this shit. She was like, you can't start a joke about racism and talk about class and all this kind of stuff just to make fun of a blind girl. Like, I did it, what's up? <laughs> And you know what the craziest thing about Helen Keller is? There's a conspiracy theory that <laughs> Helen Keller wasn't actually real. That they made her up back then. So I wanna know, who was the blind nigga in the 1800s <laughs> that they don't want me to know about? <laughs> Wild out here. Y'all doing all right? Y'all cool? Yeah. Can I tell y'all like about a personal pandemic that's affected me, like just me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I live in Los Angeles, I'm 27, and uh, I need y'all to tell me, why does every woman my age and younger just wanna peg niggas now? What is that? <laughs> what is that about? I didn't get no memo, no email, that shit not in the Bible, like I don't, I don't know what to do, man. Like. It's crazy. And here's the thing. These girls in LA get real aggressive about the shit. And it's like, first off, you 5'3 and vegan, you ain't got the energy to fuck me. Stop. <laughs> I was a whole Division One athlete. There's a certain amount of protein you need to fuck this ass. <laughs> Stop. Stop it, Jasmine. You can't. No. It's crazy. They get, they get, real, they get real aggressive about that shit, man. They be like, oh, Niles, that's just your toxic masculinity talking. <laughs> Like, no, it ain't toxic. I ain't gonna let you turn me into a black man shish kebab. Fuck you, okay? <laughs> Look, I'm not with it, man. And here's the thing. I'm not king shaming in any way. Look, if that's your thing, be freaky, do your thing. That's cool. I don't even like it when the bicycle seat be weird in my ass. I just... <laughs> it's just my preference. I just... I'm sorry, man. I don't know. Part of it is like, I can't do that shit. I got a family back home in the South, man. I can't... Christian family, man. Like... And if I let you do that to me, that means I gotta take you home down south for Thanksgiving dinner at my grandma's house, right? <laughs> and you telling me, if we're in a relationship, if I let you do that to me, like, we, we obviously dying together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully of natural causes. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and that means I'm taking you home to my grandma's house, down south. And you telling me if my grandma is within earshot, 
bacon to mac and cheese. <laughs> and we, me and you, get into an argument. I've been making y'all laugh. I'm a pretty good comedian. I'm gonna win that argument. <laughs> and we get into an argument. You telling me when I win that argument, you're not gonna get petty? Look at my grandma and go, yeah, that's why I fucked you in the ass, nigga. <laughs> You know you gonna do that shit. You ain't ever had that much power before. You petty, you gonna do it. <laughs> now you didn't kill my grandma because you wanna talk about ass play. <laughs> she got a weak heart, she a Christian. <laughs> then killed her before Thanksgiving dinner, that's crazy. And, and the sad thing is, it's just like, this is a black family. They not gonna talk shit about me in public. They gonna talk shit about me in the prayer, nigga. <laughs> Y'all already know, it's gonna go exactly like this. Dear Lord, uh, we lift Niles up and whatever he's going through right now. <laughs> we, we voted for Biden, we're trying to understand, we don't know. That's how it's gonna go. And it's just like, how am I supposed to look at my dad? and ask him to pass the mac and cheese after you did that shit to me, man. <laughs> How am I supposed to look my dad in the face and go, hey, dad, pass me the mac and cheese. My dad's the most petty nigga in the family. You know what he gonna do? He gonna point to the girl and go, nigga, that's your daddy now. I don't know what you... <laughs> I'll be real, man. Uh, another reason I can't do that shit is just like Yodoye was talking about earlier. Like, Amber Rose called Kanye a finger in the booty ass bitch, man. That's crazy. Like, people be like, why Kanye crazy? Probably that, you know? <laughs> Probably that. I get it. I get why he be doing that shit, man. I get why he be acting. I'm a big Kanye West fan. I love that. I love that nigga, man. To the day I die, I love Kanye yeah, West. Yeah. I do. And that's just one of my flaws. Y'all just gonna have to live with that shit. I love, I love that nigga. He gave me confidence as a kid, you know, and, and I love him. And, but, and so for years I've been defending him. Like, nah, Kanye ain't crazy, man. He's a torture artist. He, need, he don't need help. He fine, whatever. I mean, I'm just not gonna let white people have that W, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but every year they're like, nah, look what he did. He crazy, he need help, he need help. And then this past year during Black History Month, this nigga Kanye tweeted out, Jack Harlow was a top five rapper. <laughs> and I looked at the tweet, and I was like, yeah, y'all right, get that nigga, you need help. <laughs> no, man. I, my only problem with Kanye is like, he just give white people the confidence to say the N-word. Like, that's what it is. He, be, he gets y'all in a group and y'all say that shit, man. And I, I, one day I want to talk to him like, you know you wrong for that shit. <laughs> you know you wrong for that shit. Because it, it's the pro and Kanye knows this. The problem is white people don't have no cool shit to say. That's the problem. Y'all ain't got no cool shit to say. I'm a black dude, man. If I had to say G. Willikers, I'd kill myself. <laughs> Speaking of the N-word, you guys ever heard of this guy named Mark Twain? <laughs> Story time. <laughs> so this guy named Mark Twain wrote this book called Huckleberry Finn. And in that book, he says nigga more than amigos. <laughs> Huckleberry Finn is a fucked up book. And I remember having to read that shit in the ninth grade with white people in the room. If you were stupid, you read that shit in the 10th grade. So, <laughs> this joke may not make sense. And when I, when I tell you this story about Huckleberry Finn, just understand this happened in Mississippi. Turn your Chicago brain off. Just imagine you in Mississippi when you hear this story because you're not going to believe this shit. So, in Mississippi, the whole state is reading Huckleberry Finn freshman and 10th grade year. I have a friend that also is black, and he's going to a school across town, and he's in this advanced English class. And he's the only black kid in this class. And so, what his English teacher did to make everybody else feel comfortable, except for him, what, what, what she did was, instead of letting him read regular passages from Huckleberry Finn, he just read the nigger part. <laughs> 
I swear to God. So imagine some young white girl in the front reading a book, Huckleberry Finn and, and here comes my friend, nigger, Jim, go down the lake. That's what it was, a whole semester, just reading the nigger part out the book. And every time he come around us, he'd be complaining. He'd be like, bro, they want, I'm like, dude, like, tell your parents, nigga, what are you doing? Like, tell somebody. And he wouldn't stand up for himself. So we tried to bully that nigga into standing up for himself. <laughs> so, we, so we gave him a nickname. We called him the nigger reader. <laughs> and I know some people's cringing right now, but look, when you 14, that shit funny as fuck. I don't give a fuck, nigga. That boy was the nigger reader for a whole semester. A whole semester, we called that boy a nigger reader, bro. He got upset about it, but he never stood up for himself. He never did anything about it. One day, he wanted to fight me. One day, he wanted to fight me because I took it a little too far because I told him, I said, hey, you know, <laughs> the nigger reader sounds like a sci-fi movie. <laughs> <laughs> Written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> He ain't like that. <laughs> Can I make a political statement? Is that cool? I'm gonna do it anyway. This is normalized sex work. <laughs> but we're gonna normalize sex work. That means we gotta normalize the weird niggas that pay for that shit too. Come on now, how are we gonna help these ladies out that need to pay their rent? And you making these niggas feel weird for paying for the product, man, that's not fair. We gotta stop calling these niggas weirdos, and simps, and pay pigs, all these awful names, bro. What I'm trying to say is leave us the fuck alone, okay? I can spend my money on whatever the fuck I want to. I am a grown ass man. I'm tired of it, I'm tired of the, the shame. Tired of people trying to shame people for buying, paying for porn. I got a friend who's like, nah, you pay for porn, you weird, nigga, you pay for porn. I was like, nigga, you paid to watch Wonder Woman, stop. <laughs> the acting is way worse than that shit. <laughs> and you didn't come, nigga, I win, what's up? <laughs> Look, tired of, I'm, I'm tired of this whole, like, moral stigma people put on not making porn for work. Like, look, if you work in a corporate office, and at a corporate job, you getting fucked too, just in a different, <laughs> look, you getting fucked too, just in a different position. It's the same shit. We all just trying to make money, man. Ain't nothing different, bro. I'm tired of, I'm tired. I, look, I honestly wish more people did sex work. I really do. Like, the niggas that owe me money. <laughs> I got a cousin that owe me $50. I was on the phone with him the other day. He was like, yeah, cuz, it's gonna be a minute before I can get that 50 to you. I was like, well, shit. You better make a nut video, my nigga. <laughs> better get a link in your fucking bio. Let's go. <laughs> Tired of it, man. Tired of the excuses. You can make money, you just don't want to. <laughs> y'all, look, y'all came to a comedy show at seven. Y'all seem freaky. I'll give y'all some. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago freaky as fuck. I'll, I'll give y'all some OnlyFans tips. I'll give y'all some OnlyFans tips. Um, when you put your card on OnlyFans, I need you to understand that it's gonna automatically report to your bank as fraud. Because <laughs> them niggas at Chase believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't think you would do no nasty shit like that, bro. <laughs> so imagine me on the phone with the Chase nigga talking about, yeah, 999, that's your boy, like. <laughs> I did that shit. <laughs> so we on the phone, he talking about, Mr. Abson, we need to verbally hear what it is that you paid for <laughs> to get this charge clear. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, all right. <laughs> Only fans, man. He goes, yeah, we know that. I'm like, <laughs> all right, Chase nigga, chill with the attitude. <laughs> We still on the phone. And he's like, we need to verbally hear what the video was called that you paid for. <sighs> can, I, can I take a drink before I say this shit? <laughs> All right. 
The video is called Pussy and Pizza, bro. <laughs> And I, look, <laughs> I got to turn around when I say that shit. I can't look niggas in the eye after that. I'm ashamed. Because I was super ashamed because at this point, the Chase nigga is on the phone giggling. <laughs> Not laughing like you wonderful people have been doing. Giggling. <laughs> Giggling is disrespectful as fuck to, to do to another grown man. Nigga, either laugh or shut the fuck up. I don't want no giggle. It was emasculating. It was just, I was ashamed. But that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was my nasty ass Uber driver gonna turn around. Pussy and pizza, you fuck with Monica too? Oh shit! Stupid. Why y'all let me say shit like that? Y'all don't care about me. I'm not mentally okay right now. That's it's crazy. Any Jewish people here? Yeah. What's up? How you doing? Bro, I uh this past year I went to my first Shabbat. How'd it go? It was dope as fuck, bro. I had a good time, bro. I was on the phone with my mom, she was excited. Like she's like, oh shit, you going to Shabbat? That's crazy, that's crazy. And like I watched Seinfeld all day to get ready for that shit. <laughs> We had a good ass time at Shabbat. I was the freshest nigga there, man. <laughs> and you racist if you think it was just only Jewish people. I was fresher than the other black people that was there too. Okay? It was the freshest nigga there. And we had a good time. I brought everybody weed. It was a good time. And I was high as fuck, just sitting at the table, just watching a couple black people here and there, Jewish people of all ages, just having a good time together and, you know, congregating, just having a fun, having fun. And I thought in my head, I was like, yo, black people and Jewish people should combine like Voltron. <laughs> and fuck Mel Gibson up. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that nigga, man. Nah, man. Seriously, bro, I think black people and Jewish people should just be nice to each other. We on the same team and don't even know it sometimes. And the sad thing is, we'll never be able to team up and fuck Mel Gibson up because we've been having this age-old debate we can't get over. I don't know if y'all know this, but black people and Jewish people have this age-old argument about who are the real God's chosen people. Black people be like, we're the real Hebrews. Y'all are wrong. And then Jewish people are like, no, we're the real, real Hebrews. We got curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> And it's like, that's fair. Season 10 was a masterpiece. I can't argue. <laughs> Larry David, my nigga, man. That's, that's that dude, bro. I can't even argue with that shit, man. But if I could get every black and Jewish person and Drake in a room, <laughs> what I would say to them is, you're both wrong. You're both wrong. Neither one of you are God's chosen people. Because if we're going to go by scoreboard, God's chosen people are white. <laughs> white people don't laugh at that shit. <laughs> and I get it. Because, look, a nigga found your secret out. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Y'all not supposed, this not supposed to leave your house. I understand. <laughs> but this is a safe place. This is a safe place. I'm not even mad at you. I'd rather know God don't fuck with me, man. I'd rather know. I'd rather know the rules I'm playing by. You right? I'm not mad at white people at all. I get it. But a lot of times after shows, white people come up to me and like, hey man, I loved every joke but that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it. I get it. But I can prove white people are God's chosen people with one simple fact. Macklemore has a fucking Grammy. <laughs> Thrift shop, nigga, are you serious? Are you fucking kidding me? Don't act like y'all don't remember that shit. 2011. I'm taking you back. 2011. Macklemore wins best rap 
album Grammy. You know who he beat that year? He beat Kendrick Lamar. He beat Kendrick Lamar and Jay-Z. Pre-cheating Jay-Z. And we love that nigga. 2011, Mac Lamar beats them. That's racist. And then, he beats Drake. That's anti-Semitic. I rest my case. <laughs> Y'all clap, so that means that is a good enough joke for the next thing I'm about to do. <laughs> Y'all just fucked up. That was such a good joke that next, on the count of three, I want every single white person in this room <laughs> to apologize to me for Macklemore. Every black person in this room, stare them niggas in the eyes and make sure 16-year-old Niles gets his fucking apology. All right? Y'all ready? One, two, three. Apology not accepted. Fuck y'all. Fuck y'all, man. Another political statement. Free Palestine. Yeah. Free it. I got I I had I had a homie, man. We would he was so team free Palestine. We would go to a bar. He would wear a button on his shirt that said free Palestine. A button. Like, that's why, like, y'all ever hang out with a biracial person and be like, oh, shit, yeah, your mom the white one. I get it. Like, <laughs> just doing some overzealous shit. Like, we at the bar trying to get hoes. You acting like Deborah, nigga, stop. Like, <laughs> just ruining the whole night for me. Talking about some free Palestine on his shirt. Every time somebody comes to the bar, talking about free Palestine, arguing people down, making people leave. <laughs> every, every person that has Zionist views left, left the bar. He was just arguing niggas down, man. But what... The girl that was throwing the birthday party at the bar didn't tell us. She had three friends that were coming in that were, they were women that were former IDF soldiers. Oh. Yeah. If you didn't join in on the groans and you don't know this, uh, the IDF soldiers don't really fuck with the pre free Palestine. Thing. <laughs> because they the niggas not free in Palestine. <laughs> So they don't really fuck with that ideology. So I'm sitting there like, oh shit, I'm seeing the three Gal Gadots walking. <laughs> yeah, we going there. <laughs> so I'm seeing them walking. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, nigga, you 5'8", and you don't like confrontation, go to the bathroom. So, <laughs> so I go to the bathroom. And I'm sitting there, I count to like 75. <laughs> I don't care about this nigga's life. Uh, if he wants to get cry from a god, good for him. I don't, I do not, I, look, I ain't with it, man. And, and I walk out the bar. I, wa I walk out the bathroom of the bar, and I walk out, and I see my friend, and he's talking to the three Gail Gadots. <laughs> Y'all never gonna watch Wonder Woman again. <laughs> At least not the same. <laughs> And I see something different about him. Something's different about his outfit. The button is in this nigga's pocket. Cause I don't know if y'all know this about straight dudes, but some of them, the thought of getting some pussy will change their whole political, whole political ideology. I got a homie that's been a libertarian four times. And it's okay, cause he don't know what that shit is. And so I walk over, I see the three Gail Gadots talking to my homie, and I was like, hey, what's going on? The button in your pocket. First thing I hear out this nigga's mouth is, well, you know, there's some gray area to the situation. <laughs> what? <laughs> you was the button nigga five minutes ago. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. 
That's what I'm saying. I, I just been cutting friends off, firing wingmen this year. <laughs> I, it's crazy. Like I, I fired my wingman, one of, another one of my wingmen. Cause we was at a bar, we chilling, we drinking, and uh, these two white girls walk up. They recognize me from the internet. It's how most of y'all are here. That's <laughs> how I make my money. And they talk to my friend and they go, "Hey, can we buy Niles a drink?" And my friend's dumb ass gonna go, no, I think y'all fetishize black men. <laughs> like, nigga. Like, y'all know these niggas need like a break off Twitter. Like, that's, that's him. And so I pull him to the side, right? I pull him to the side. And he's just like, what, Niles? I think they fetishize black men. And I go, exactly, nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Man, I say shit like that, and I'm like, yeah, nigga, this is why you ain't made it yet. That's why. <laughs> Can't say shit like that on TV. They would never let that happen. I had this meeting a little while ago with a very large production company studio, and they wanted a movie idea from me. So I got high and turned turn my Zoom call on. And this is what I do at the beginning of Zoom calls when I pitch movies. Uh, I do this thing where... <laughs> Because I don't know, because a lot of times it's black producers on the other side of the call. And black Hollywood, regular black, is different. So I don't know how much of a nigga I can be on this Zoom call. <laughs> so I ask the same question before every pitch. Did you enjoy Hamilton? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, in Zoom call, we're not gonna buy this shit. Nah, man, but I pitched this movie idea to them. And basically, this is the movie idea. Uh, I had this movie idea where a black vigilante captures black children from the white families that adopt them. <laughs> they said nope. <laughs> they ain't like that shit. And my reps was mad. I was like, what is wrong with you? Do you understand this is Hollywood? The people you pitching to probably adopted black kids? What is you doing? <laughs> I was like, nigga, Angelina Jolie can't see that. What are you? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, it might be racist, but I don't like that shit. I don't. I, I think it's weird. I do. I think it's weird. I think it's weird when a white family wants to adopt a black or Asian kid. And it, it, it's weird, man, because there is so many, like, dirty foot white kids in foster care <laughs> that you could adopt. You better get them kids before Ezra Miller, dude. Come on. <laughs> These white children is in crisis because y'all want, like, because these, what these rich white families do, and I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all pay $15 for a comedy show. <laughs> you can't afford to adopt a black child. <laughs> but it's these rich white families that don't know other, any other black people. They want to adopt, or Asian people, they want to adopt a black or Asian child, man. It's weird. And like, they're kind of like rappers in a sense. Like, they flex the black children they adopt, like rappers <laughs> flex their chains and shit. <laughs> And it's fucked up. I don't like it, man. Because how weird is it that you don't have no black people in your life and you turn to your partner and say, hey, we don't have any black friends. You want to buy one? What? <laughs> what? That's what adoption is. You buying a nigga. Like, that's real. I know some of y'all little missionary friends, you worrying about them. Yeah, that's what them niggas doing. Um, <laughs> But look, and here's the thing. I think that movie, The Blind Side, just radicalized me. I don't know. <laughs> if you see Sandra Bullock, tell her it's on sight. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying right now. Because I, I see other movies, and I'm just like, I should have a movie at least. Like, <laughs> bro. Like, like, there's this one movie on Netflix, and I actually kind of liked it. But it's wild, because it's, it's, about, it's about this thing that a lot of people that aren't black, they don't know about in the history of this country. Basically, in the early 1900s, what certain biracial people or light-skinned people would do, or the word back then was mulatto, don't say that shit, you're gonna get fired at your job. Like, <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be saying that shit. So these mulatto people, what they would do, <laughs> what they would do is they would pass as white and pretend to be white so they would have a good life and not have to deal with no bullshit. 
So Netflix has this movie called Passing that's on. It's pretty good. You should watch it. And basically the storyline is this lady pretends to be white. She has a white husband, white life. She's having a good time. And then she has a friend from her past that's black who's also light-skinned that uh, basically finds out what she's doing. And the whole movie is kind of like the, the conflict of what she's supposed to do. And so I'm watching this movie, high as shit, <laughs> and thinking like, as a brown-skinned person, I don't think I could have lived in that era because I would have snitched on all them niggas. I don't care. <laughs> Bruh, you not about to live a better life than me because you look like Zendaya's cousin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that, man. I don't like that shit, bro. It's crazy. Because I be think, I just be thinking about this shit. Like, back then, everything was segregated. So that means if you're black, you, there are certain white restaurants that you couldn't eat inside. You got your food around back. And this is the South. This is where white people can actually cook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there might be a white restaurant or two that might have your favorite, you know, dish or whatever. So imagine you walking down the street, right? You walk in with your homie, and you walk past your favorite white establishment, and you see a light-skinned nigga you grew up with at the counter <laughs> eating a burger, right? And you don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that. So you look at your homie like, hold on, nigga, is that James? Like, I know that ain't James eating at the, co at the counter. I'm petty, like what do I do? So I walk inside, I walk inside and I try to get James's attention, but James looking around cause he's trying to be a white, he's trying to be a white man right now so he's not paying attention to me. He being a white man so he looking around not paying attention to me. What do you do? So I get the manager. <laughs> and the manager comes over first of all the manager is like very upset and freaked out that I'm inside in the first place <laughs> he's like what the fuck is going on and I go look sir I know this is gonna be hard to understand but this is a nigga sir <laughs> this is a nigga put some water in his hair you'll see look at his lips look at his lips send him his food around back we about to eat together nigga fuck him <laughs> That's why I'm a snitch. I don't give a fuck. I, that's what I would do, man. Cause, cause, it, cause I don't, I don't like when people are black when they need something. You know what I'm saying? Or when white people steal black culture when they want to do something. You know what I'm saying? Like the Justin Bieber's and Timberlake's and Miley for one albums of the world. <laughs> I don't like when black people do that shit too. The Stacey Dashes, the Candace Owens, Obama when he need to drop some bombs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, they let that light-skinned nigga in the tan suit smile in your face for eight years while he was killing people over there. And that's why they let him do that shit. And you supposed to be okay with it, man. I don't like that shit. I don't like when black people do this thing where they don't give a fuck about black people and then when they really need some help, they really need some support, they black all of a sudden. Like uh, this person I don't like, her name is Meghan Markle. <laughs> Y'all know who Meghan Markle is? She got in some trouble across the pond. <laughs> and her, her first choice was, let me go cry on Oprah and Blood Diamonds. Oh, <laughs> That's what she did. She went and cried on Oprah and Blood Diamonds to try to get some rapport with black people like we the same and shit. No, girl, we pay bills. We can't live in Tyler Perry house. Stop. <laughs> it's not the same. And a lot of people try to feel bad for her because what America has done, they fucked black people so hard that we feel like every single form of representation is good when it's not. And so we like, oh, we need to support her. We need to support everybody black. No, fuck that. Fuck that shit. I have a rule with supporting people and having empathy. Uh, I don't give a fuck about any of your problems if you lighter than Stephen Curry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a white dude in here like, oh, shit, that's me. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> no, I'm tired of that shit. She married into the British Empire. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this, but they are the LeBron of racism. They started this shit. They are the root cause of your black ass demise in the Western world. In the Western world.
The British Empire. The Jamaican Prime Minister says the British Empire is the greatest human tragedy of all time. I think them niggas know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And Megan just married into that shit and expected us to feel bad for her when shit went left. When shit went left. It's just crazy to me because I started thinking like, how bad? She pulled a fast one. She's really smart. How bad can your life really be if you didn't find out you was a nigga till you met the Queen of England? <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm Irish. Fuck them, okay? <laughs> She was perfectly okay with all that shit if they had just simply liked her. If they had just simply liked her, she would have been okay with all that shit. We would have never seen her on Oprah. We would have even heard none of that shit. I can even tell you how that first day in the kingdom went down. Because I know the queen. The queen of G, bro. The queen is a straight thug. She got a body, bro. We ain't got to say no names, Diana. But anyway... <laughs> Look, if white people can say OJ did it, I can say the queen did it. Fuck you. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. Nah, I can tell you how the whole, that whole first day went down with the queen, you know what I'm saying? She, she sees Harry and Meghan walk in, and she looks, she kind of squints a little bit, and she's like, Harry? Who is this nigga with you? <laughs> What, y'all don't think the queen say the N-word? That woman is a murderer. She says the N-word. The white dude you went to high school with says the N-word. Stop. The queen says the N-word. She listens to Biggie. Chill, okay? So she says that. She's like, who is this nigga with you? And you know what Megan did? Megan cold too. You know what she did? She turned around. She said, y'all got niggas working here? Where they at? Cause she don't give a fuck about you. She don't. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I just, I be upset about that shit, man. I be upset about just our culture just getting took all the time, man. It's just, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And, and, what, and I remember one time I was, I was just doing a lot of drugs and, <laughs> and just really thinking about some shit. And I was like, a lot of times, it's, it's, it's black dudes fault, you know? Because we, we be letting people in that not supposed to be in the culture, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just be letting people in. And, and, I, and a lot of times, we be just complimenting white people. And I realize, like, black people's compliments hold a lot of power. Like, like black people's compliments make white rappers happen. <laughs> yeah. Black people's compliments are very, like, very strong. Like, I stopped complimenting white dudes for Lent. <laughs> That's how hard this shroom trip was, bro. Like, fuck that. I realized that. I was like, bro, we got to stop, like, complimenting white people. They got enough confidence and privilege. Like, we don't need to do that, bro. Because then they feel like they can do all this shit, like... Cause that, that's, that's really what happens. Like, I really feel like white rappers come from black dude compliments. Like, think about it. Some white kid, 12 years old, middle school, skateboarding to school, just got some new shoes, right? Just having a regular white boy day. He not, he not even about to shoot the school up. He's just having a good time. And then, <laughs> that was racist, I'm sorry. Y'all can, can take one. Y'all can take one. <laughs> and as he's riding to school, new shoes, having a good day, some nigga on the corner, 34 years old, live with his mom, don't have no authority on nothing, but he's just black. So y'all think his, whatever he says means something. This nigga smoking a black and mild on Tuesday. <laughs> and he compliments the white kid. He goes, hey. Hey, hey, man, hey, little man, nice shoes. And you know what that white kid does? He goes home, takes that compliment, and starts making beats. <laughs> and becomes a star. Becomes a whole star. That's, it. That's what it is. Black compliments make white rappers. 
What I'm trying to say is, when I find the nigga that complimented Macklemore in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> 